A family is the most basic, yet the most important unit in any given community. And if all the challenges of a family are addressed, I'm talking about hunger, I'm talking about feeding practices, malnutrition, talk of any challenge that could uh, affect or have any consequences on a family, then also the community challenges are addressed. Why am I talking about that? Today we talk family health and in the studios with me is the Executive Director of Society for Family Health, Mr. Manase Wandera. It's a pleasure to have you on the BQ. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you changed or oh, SFH, it, it used to be PSI and it changed to SFH. Why, why, why was the change in the name? What prompted that? Uh, thank you, Amy. First of all, thank you for hosting me here. Uh, pleasure. Back to your question. Uh, SFH is a completely new organization, but of course it, it transitioned from PSI. PSI uh, was here for the last 20 years, mm. but uh, after serving for all that time, it really realized that it was time to now to give birth to a new local organization that is uh, based in Rwanda, okay. that understands the Rwandan context, that addresses the people of Rwanda, that is run by Rwandese. Yes. So basically the change was a positive change. Because PSI is an international organization, sure. it operates in over 60 countries. So it was time that they, they realized they had done a very good job in Rwanda. So it was time now for the Rwandans to run their own show. Thank you. Sh sure. Now, when you talk about family health, I think about the child, the mother, the father. Exactly. What's your particular role in as far as family health is concerned in upbringing or in improving the health of the family unit? Thank you. Uh, actually, Society for Family Health is more a broad-based organization that looks at the comprehensive health issues. For example, we are into HIV prevention, yes. we are into family planning, we are into malaria prevention, uh, water and sanitation, uh, we are into nutrition. So basically, and all those are issues that affect a family setting. Yes. For example, if we talk about uh, HIV prevention, uh, our focus mainly is around behavior change communication, basically changing behaviors, mm. uh, encouraging people to adopt positive behaviors and practices. So definitely, if you talk about uh, HIV prevention yeah. in a home, so basically say father and mother, you must have that information, you must transmit it to your children sure. so that they understand the risk that is out there. You must talk about water, clean water, sanitation, hygiene, from a family setting, but mm. also, of course, from the broader community setting. So basically, what we do is to go out, uh, have proper communication materials, and sensitize people, communicate the right messages to help people change their behaviors to live health life. Before we throw more light on uh, the areas of your intervention, you've talked mm. about behavior change. Correct. And uh, we, we address one of the questions uh, that was sent by uh, the audience on our social media platforms. That is Kwikiriza Edwin. Yes. He says SFH is concerned with behavior change communication in yes. various health aspects. And that is something that you also highlighted. Yes. How easy or hard is it to have people change their behaviors or their mindsets? <laughs> Very interesting question. Actually, Behavior, behavior change is the key. Let me say yeah. that it is the key to any significant change in life because it is about decision making. Yeah. Leaving a certain practice and adopting another practice that is positive, that is beneficial to your life. Mm. So you're asking how easy it has yes. been? Or hard. Actually. Or hard, yes. yeah. So I will say it has been both because you have really registered successes across, across the country. We have seen uh, people giving us testimonies of how our messages have helped them to change behavior. But in other cases, we have seen where we have had interventions and we see slow progress. But we believe that uh, behavior change is not uh, an overnight practice. Yep. So it takes time. You must first of all see, you must first of all understand what is happening. You see how other people have uh, probably used the messages and you see what has happened, the change in their lives. So sometimes it has definitely been hard. We understand it is a process. Yep. It uh, requires to see what is happening and uh, to really experience the change. And sometimes having the information is one thing, applying the information is a completely different story. Yep. So that's why it is a continuous process. Sometimes it's slow, but surely it works. Very good. Now Thank over you. to Gasana, mm -hmm. El Defons. Talk about malnutrition, one of your areas of intervention. It is becoming a global health threat. 
In so Rwanda alone, it's uh, about 38% of the children are stunted. Why do we still have such a big number with all SFH's efforts in uh, scaling up nutrition levels? By the way, when you talk about 38, definitely it is an alarming number. Yeah. Even if it is lower than that, it would be very bad. But you have also to see the progress, we have, where we have come from. Okay. Previously, five years back, it was at 44%. Now it has dropped to 38%. Mm. Whereas that is not uh, definitely solely SFH efforts, but we are happy, we do contribute, especially around behavior change communication, training people, teaching people, giving them the right information about balanced diet, bringing them together in small groups and training them, talking with them, giving them the right, uh, you know, the right practices and going back to evaluate whether they are using the information we gave them. So, whereas still 38 is not good, we are not proud about 38, mm. Especially with, uh, I know it, there are so many partners. We have a bigger framework of the government of Rwanda, which we are working in, but there has been progress. And we are confident that yeah. even that with concerted efforts, partnerships, we can still reduce that figure to a very, very small number. You know, Rwanda was very praised because of uh, how it performed well in the MDGs. But malnutrition, all nutrition, was the only goal that Rwanda wasn't able to achieve successfully. Why is the case? And well, what needs to be done, actually? I think what needs to be done, there, there, there's no single answer to that, yep. in my opinion. Okay. But people can come together and discuss. When you look at the, the reasons as to why probably there's this prevailing malnutrition, you ask yourself, is there, is, is there a lack of food? Okay. The answer is probably no. Mm. And then why? So the issue zeroes down to knowledge do people know exactly what to eat and the sequences the right balanced diet and do mothers because you know the mothers who cook the food mm. determine a lot yeah because they're the ones really who serve the food to children or to the family so if they have the right knowledge around what is the best balanced diet then after knowing then they actually implement what they know okay they take action actually that's why sfh is emphasizing behavior change communication, giving the right messages, getting closer to people, discussing with them, giving them the right tools, and then evaluating to see if they're actually people, if people are actually implementing what we discuss with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Very good. Now, still about nutrition, I'm very sure I'll not leave that because it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a very impertinent issue as mm. long as, as far as family is concerned. Now, you have all these efforts that you've been doing mm. yeah, in relation to how you're going to communicate. And, and the levels are still that high. Sure. Should I say there is an issue with the mode of communication that you're using to send out the information to these mothers or to the people that are concerned? We have various modes of communication. Good. We always evaluate them. And sometimes we are always, actually, in most cases, we are always adjusting to make sure that we are using the right mode of communication. For example, we use what we call IPC, interpersonal communication. Bring a, f a group of people together, few okay. people. Okay about 25 in number, then discuss issues. Some people give testimonies of how they do what they do, yes. and what is working, and what is not working, and what is working with difficulties, and then adjusting. So that's one mode. Mm. Another mode is maybe, actually sometimes we go to the radio, and uh, put out clear messages or on a balanced diet, on who is supposed to do what. Okay. And we, s we evaluate whether that message is making an impact. So whereas the figures are still alarming, but we are happy about the progress. We are not happy about the figures, but we are happy about the progress. And we believe with the concerted effort. I will give you an example. Okay. Recently, we worked with different partners to form a movement that would advocate for nutrition. It's called CISA Rwanda. So basically, it, is, uh, it, is, it stems from a Sun Global Alliance about fighting malnutrition. Okay. And everybody is coming together so that we don't have scattered efforts so that we can put our efforts together we can make the right attack against malnutrition and measure progress over time if something is not working we fix it yeah we take a very short break and we'll be right back still talking about family health please keep it here
Welcome back, and I'm glad that you're still watching our TV. We are still on the BQ. Please go to our Twitter handle at RBA Randa, at RTV English, and mine at Ime Molekatete. Leave a comment, a suggestion, or a question for Mr. Manasse. And like I said, we're still talking family health, and I'm still with him on the BQ, Mr. Manasse from uh, Society for Family Health. We continue, and we're still talking about malnutrition or about uh, nutrition. Last year, you fronted a campaign aimed at popularizing breastfeeding, especially in the first six months of a child. Correct. And Matt Livingstone says, the question is, is there a way you're pushing for improved working conditions of working mothers to give them time to breastfeed? Yes. Uh, well, as actually that is a, a core area that needs to be addressed, we, we are doing it with other partners. Yes. So it is definitely important that uh, if you're talking about breastfeeding, then you must provide the infrastructure, you must provide the facilities, you yep. must provide the convenience that is really needed for the mother to breastfeed. Mm. So for working mothers, like... Uh, like uh, me. <laughs> yes, like yeah. me. For working mothers, yep. so you really need to feel free to bring your kid at your office. Ah, Mr. Manasseh. And then you say there's no facility, there's no... Exactly. Exactly. What are some of the facilities that you would advocate for that should be put in some of these companies that we have? You know, the, it, it, it all revolves around flexibility. Okay. So, for example, if you are... If you're working for RBA yes. and you are expected to deliver certain, uh, certain outputs yes. and you are also expected to breastfeed your kid, which is really vital, then you must discuss with your, your, your supervisor and see how flexible it is. Because uh, the most important thing is not how many hours you stay at RBA. The yeah. most important thing is your productivity. And the most important thing, again, is to make sure that you are raising your baby to make sure that tomorrow maybe she's the one going to... I know, to do a lot, yeah, even you know, the president yeah. or anything else. But yeah. you know, the problem is, like you said, flexibility. If I carry my child here, for example, yeah. because I'll have to keep breastfeeding and probably most of my work necessitates me to be on my desk. Yes. And that child starts crying because there is no particular nursery room where we can put them. Don't you think in one way or another, You're going to inconvenience. I'm going to inconvenience my colleagues at work? Certainly, yes, you're going to inconvenience them. But if you plan it, if you schedule it, that's why I'm saying that there is no single fixed answer yes. to everything. But honestly, if you must breastfeed, and I know when you breastfeed, you will be psychologically okay. You will feel that you have yes. really done your job. Yeah. You have done a, your duty as a mom. Yes. So when you discuss with your, depending on, your, of course, your work environment, yeah. when you discuss with your supervisor, Certainly, you can, you, can, you can do what is possible. If it is impossible to bring your kid at the office, then definitely they have to provide flexible working hours so that you are able to deliver, but also able to execute your duties. At some point, there was a debate about yeah. having uh, facilities that you had talked about, like mm. a nursery room in, in, in companies. Do you think that is a viable solution to this particular challenge? You know, I believe in attempting. I believe in trying. Okay. So, honestly, if it has worked elsewhere, why yep. can't it work in Rwanda? Sure. And definitely, I am not saying that there, there, shouldn't, there, there are no issues around that. Mm. If there are issues, we address them. But instead of theorizing around that, let's try it. If it doesn't work, then we fix what, it does not, what is not working instead of just leaving it and talking about it. Okay. Yeah, Very I good. believe in action. Very good. Now we go to Mukama and Asonia, malaria cases yes. in Rwanda that increased. And uh, the last figure I saw was 68 percent they increased to that level in Rwanda and this seems to be under your docket I saw it on the website it's one of your areas of intervention yes. why did we have the cases skyrocket like that of course there are several reasons uh, as to why the cases have skyrocketed and uh, but one of the things again is the issue around the behavior Some okay. of, uh, of course, the, the ministry has given their official position around the, the issue of uh, the nets, the okay. issue of the climate change, mm. and all that. What we are saying is that it is important that people know that there is a big challenge, and then it needs extraordinary measures, taking extraordinary measures. For example, if you do a survey and ask people who sleep under the net every day, some people have the nets, they don't use them. Yeah. Some people have their, their nets torn, they don't repress them. Of course, there are issues around the, having access to, to the nets. Mm. But the most important thing is to have the right knowledge. 
Have you cleaned around your home? Yeah. Do you close the windows uh, in time? Do you put on the net if you have it yeah. every single day? Because even those who have the nets do not use them. So that's why we encourage them. We encourage them to use the nets every single day. It's not to use it one day and leave another day. No. Every single day. Consistency we, uh, in this behavior of applying the protective measures. Yep. Now that the, the behaviors have not changed and we're seeing very many mortality rates in relation to malaria, what do you think ought to be done, especially, we can start with the local, I mean, the grassroots levels to make sure that this is spread on. But before, before we change the behaviors of the people in that regard, we want to reduce these mortality rates. What needs to be done? So, <coughs> I think there are, there are multiple combinations of uh, approaches. Yep. Number one is to avail the, 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 the necessary tools and materials, for example, the mosquito nets, mm. if they are available, then we encourage people to sleep under them. Okay. But also destroying the, the mosquito breeding places. Yeah. Sometimes really, you find that the, the around homes, there are bushes, yes. there are breeding places for mosquitoes. Really that does not take rocket science. It's just training people, encouraging them to actually do what is right. Because some of these problems are preventable. So. Whereas we say that the, 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 the figures are really high for malaria, mm. but we also have to know that Rwanda has recently received the, I mean, an award for having succeeded in some instances. But malaria keeps you know, surging up again. Yeah. So that means we have to put efforts, yeah, all of us, efforts. as NGOs, as government, as other partners, to have concerted efforts so that there is consistency in approaches and behaviors. Now I go to HIV AIDS, yes. you know, it, it, it can also be a big debate. Yes. Uh, it's, it's still one of uh, your initiatives that uh, you, you, you operate on. The HIV prevalence rate is still high, especially among people in the urban areas and especially women. Yes. What have you done to address this specific bracket of people, those in the urban areas and the women, to make sure that uh, we reduce the numbers? You know, we, we do a number of things, but most around preventive. So one is to provide the messages, uh, the right messages on how to prevent uh, HIV AIDS. Number two is to do counseling and testing so that people know their status. And those who, are, who test positive, we link them to care, which is very important. So that okay. when you know your status, and you, you definitely know which measures to take. If you, are, if you are negative, then you know that you really should protect yourself. If you are positive, still you know that you must take medication I mean, have, uh, take care of yourself so that you don't really spread it, but also you live a health life. Mm. And this has really, uh, we have seen it succeeding. Then number two is to, you know, to, to encourage health living. Yeah. So we, you, I think you also know that we do uh, distribute condoms yeah. Yeah, around the country, which is a great preventive measure. And some people associate condoms with, pro, uh, with uh, fornication. Yep. Uh, others uh, just have stigma around them. And therefore, they prefer to not to use them or to, to, to shy away from them. But actually, they don't shy away from sex. So which of is course. <laughs> which is uh, very contradicting. So yeah. They risk their lives. So what we do is that we, we tell them that if you decide to have sex with... Uh, with a person you are not sure of their status, mm. your life is very, very important. So don't waste your life. Don't throw away your life. Protect yourself. But people say that in that particular moment, probably they're not thinking about destroying their lives or anything. You know, at the, at the end of the day, we want to have those measures that are going to be practical. Has SFH ensured that these condoms are available in all those particular places where people find themselves, you know, in that temptation, as they normally call it? Well, what we have done is that we have, uh, we have now currently about 6,000 outlets where these condoms are sold and distributed countrywide. Okay. And we see them, that they are used all the time, and they buy them. So definitely, you cannot put out your money to buy something you're not going to use. Yeah. But you say, okay... In that moment, sometimes uh, people are not thinking about protecting themselves or somehow they are, uh, you know, I don't know whether you can say that they are, they are not thinking straight. Yeah. That's why we are there, to tell them that your life is more important. Okay. So you definitely need to think straight.
So there's, a, there's an approach we use, the ABC. Mm. So abstain. So some people say they can't abstain. Yeah. So if you can't abstain, please use a condom. Okay. Be faithful. So they can't we, be faithful. So we encourage them to be faithful. Okay. By the way, I'm also a preacher of the gospel. So I encourage people to be faithful to their partners. Okay. Which is very important. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Well, allow me not to go in that, in that <laughs> direction. Uh, let's talk about SDGs, the Correct. newly uh, adopted developmental uh, goals. Uh, Chigezi Moses says mm -hmm. that how is SFH aligning the interventions and initiatives to the newly adopted development goals, especially in relation to goal number two about yeah. the zero hunger, goal number three about uh, the good health and well-being, and goal number six, clean water and sanitation? So clean water and sanitation, if I may start with that, yes. is one of our core areas. So for example, we have two uh, household water treatment uh, uh, products. One is called Zero, another one is called P&G, formerly used to be called Pure. Yes. So these are water disinfectors. So last year, for example, we are able to disinfect millions of liters uh, of drinking water. Mm. And that, to, to us, is a success. But that's one side. Another side is about, again, education, providing the right materials, the right educational materials, so that people know that it is dangerous to consume uh, contaminated water. Mm. It is against, it, it is actually, it is a threat, it's a big threat to their lives. So this information itself saves a lot. So that's number one. So definitely with that, we are yep. de definitely running to the SDG. Yes. So, and around the... Um, uh, health and well-being, so talk about family planning, yeah. talk about HIV prevention, talk about definitely uh, nutrition, you t we talked about that. That's all around uh, health and well-being. Mm. And we encourage people to, you know, to know about their status. Yeah. We now take a very short break and we will be right back. Like I've been telling you, you can visit us on our Twitter handle at rbaranda at RTV English and my own at Ime Molekatete. You can follow all of them and then you'll get updates in as far as the BQ is concerned and the entire programming. We'll take a very short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm glad that you have chosen to be here with me on the BQ and on our TV English. I'm still with Mr. Manase Wander, the Executive Director of uh, Society for Family Health. And we're still talking family health. Many issues affect the families and many issues still need to be addressed. And like he noted that they, there is need for concerted efforts. Now, you talked about family planning before we went off uh, for a break. Yes. We see there are still many cases of unwanted pregnancies. We're still seeing many cases of uh, people saying that me, when I use that particular family planning method, it has an issue with me or something happens or we are not compatible or many cases like that. What has SFH done in as far as helping those mothers yeah, to identify probably the best family planning method or to help them erase all the fears that they have as far as the methods are concerned? Uh, thank you, Amy. One of the things we have done is to give them a range of methods to okay. provide information uh, about available methods. There are so many. Yeah. So that they are, and then explaining each method so that everybody can really have a choice. So this is available, and this is available, and this is available. Mm. Then the, uh, the other aspect is that we work with health centers. We work with medical professionals who can really explain in detail. Yeah. And therefore, each person can really choose what they think is appropriate for them with, again, guidance from the medical people. Yeah. So that really has been uh, so helpful. That's the number one. Number two is to tell them that, uh, is to really give them, to sensitize them and tell them that, uh, you know, you, you have a choice here. Yeah. So if you want to, to plan your family, it is really up to you. It is you to make a, a good choice, good informed choice. Yes. So SFH has really been providing information communication around the available methods of family planning. Very and we really see positive changes. Very good. You noted that you're also a preacher. Yes. You're a preacher man. There's been very many uh, contrary methods or contrary uh, perspectives or ideas as mm. far as family planning methods are concerned yes. from the church. Yes. As a preacher man, what would you say about that? Okay. Yes. As, as, as a preacher man, as a Christian. Yes. There have been many ideas or there have been many issues that have come up. 
do you do you still encourage people to use family planning methods? Of course, I I mean you know that I'm a preacher and uh, I'm um I yes I I am proud that I am yes and uh, I have four children yes so I'm now. I'm married for the last uh, almost 14 years. Congratulations. So, uh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> so uh, definitely, if I had not uh, planned my family, I should be having about probably 10 kids or 15 mm. kids. Yes. <laughs> so definitely, uh, I, I do encourage it. I believe it is, it is godly to do family planning. Yes. And I believe it is important for people to have the right information, all the available methods. And it is also godly for people to choose the right methods. But the people you're talking to are confused. The church comes and tells them that uh, family planning methods are not that good. Not and my then, church. Okay. <laughs> and that's why I'm going to leave that aside. Thank now, you. Now, yeah, <laughs> Muhaweni Man Asaidi, yes. I go a little bit football. Yeah. It says last year you injected over 11 million Rwandan francs in a football tournament meant to popularize the use of condoms. Mm. And uh, he takes us back to the use of condoms and says that it's still shunned by so many. Why is it the mm. case? Again, it is lack of information and lack of knowledge. So we did that and we saw positive change. Do you know, mm. last year we were able to sell over 12 million condoms. Yep. So that means definitely there is a positive increase. Does, has it reached where we want? Not yet. Mm. That's why we're still working hard, trying to adopt different methods to increase the usage. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And thanks a lot for the questions that you sent in on uh, the BQ and thank you so much for using our platforms to put out your questions and to be able to talk to all these leaders that we bring on the BQ. I am Imi Moleka Tete Kalema wishing you a wonderful time and telling you to keep watching RBA or even go to my YouTube channel Ime Moleka Tete for the previous editions or this particular one just in case you're unable to catch up with it uh, for its full length. Be well and be blessed. <laughs>